We're gonna hit it from the top rope today. Yeah! Oh, see, today I, I think today uh, I oh. got I got the squirter. Oh. Hmm. This is thick and juicy, just how I like it. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start this. <laughs> oh um, my god. All right. Welcome back to another episode of 4099. With your host, Nick. And Dima. And today, um, we are drinking on some crazy brews. What are we drinking on today, boys? All right, man. So uh, I'm starting off with a home sweet home coming straight from Farmville, North Carolina's Casita Cervecería. Mm. They uh, went ahead and they threw together a big old cozy stout made with pecan, coffee, vanilla, and cocoa nibs. Oh. And uh, it's banging out 10 APV or ABV. I can't fucking talk like ever. And uh, That's already making you a little, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 10 points. It knocks on the door pretty quick. For Gryffindor. <laughs> Actually, I'm a Ravenclaw. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I'm a Ravenclaws. So uh, thank you, Farmville. Y'all doing it. Uh, what you guys got? Connor, what you drinking on? Uh, I'm a wuss, so I'm drinking cider. Uh, me from Pacific Northwest, grown apples. <laughs> hey, lit. Uh, and then I am also a wuss. I'm also drinking a cider. This is um, Shaxbury's very own dry hopped Arlo cider. And it is kicking at 6%. Which is, so, I was saying, a up. that's a big step up for you. I think, like, your your Colorado cider was, like, high fours. Yeah, it was, like, a 4.5, maybe a 4.8. We're going to have to run the track back. and. I'm at 5.5. Okay, so we, we all, yeah. we're, we're getting, you know. Everybody's, everybody's shooting above, like, Bud Light level, and I appreciate that. Because <laughs> that's where we started. That's where I started. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and... Yeah clarify that all right all right here we go for the folks that are viewing this hello welcome our beautiful beautiful viewership from youtube for the folks that are going to be listening to this hello to you guys our listeners um today we have a very very extremely special guest with us today drum roll connor hey (laughs) (laughs) and uh today with Connor, we're going to be talking about all things cars, like cars, cars related, car photography, maybe even some like under the hood preferences, you know, and just whatever the fuck you got going yeah. on in your life, you know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Um, so welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, Nick, what's up? Did you have anything to ask Connor? Like, I have a lot. So <laughs> So, like, fancy myself something of a car, more so truck guru. Okay. Um, I, yeah, I've been around fucking cars my entire life. Um, I actually grew up in, like, southern rural Virginia as a small kid, right behind, like, uh, the Martinsville Speedway. (laughs) So, like, I was, like, super in it for a while. Like, I, as, like, like, from, like... Five years old until I was probably 11 or 12, all I wore were NASCAR t shirts. Oh, <laughs> um, Dude, you would fit into the fashion scene now. Like yeah, NASCAR yeah, yeah. t shirts are the yeah. same. Yeah, like, it's like some hype 1995 <laughs> Nick would have been really big in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was before my time, but. Fashion guru. Yeah, um, so I've gone a long way. I've had like, I've had some sports cars. I've had. All kinds of like I've had like low riders, and then I had my SUV period, and then as an adult I've matured into like off road, um, driving. Yeah, driving. Okay. like the whole four by four go mud and get uh. get deep, girl kind of thing, <laughs> you know. And it's it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of hard fucking work because like you put a lot of money into these fucking rigs and then you go out, you tear them up and they're all gunked up with mud. So it's kind of a kick in the yammer. Yeah, like, you gotta clean them. Yeah. All kinds of um, shit. Um, yeah, what about you? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, I'm really into like Japanese cars. Yeah. Um, I, that's what we call the, the tuner market. Right? Yes. Yeah, tuner cars. Um, 
I guess I guess I'll just walk through. Yeah, go ahead. Run us down, man. My whole life. So basically, um, I've been well, in the cars. First of all, before you start, I was gonna ask you why specifically tuner cars. Okay, uh, it's probably just a product of me growing up when I did early two thousands. So Fast and Furious. Um, even though I was only four when the first one came out, mm-hmm. so it took me a while to watch those. But really, what did it was Need for Speed, the yeah. video game series. Um, oh, man, those are so sick. Fan. I love those. Yeah, like that really is what showed me what you could do to a car as mm. far as modifications. I mean, it's basically a canvas on wheels, and I, I got to experience that as a kid. So. I was, I was the, I was the uh, Midnight Club dub edition yes. remix kind of guy. Midnight Club is very important as well. Yeah, dude, I love that video yeah. game. It's just like those games have a really like cult following at yeah. this point. So. Yeah. Are they releasing, like, have they released a new one, or is that, like... What, Need for Speed? No, the Midnight Club uh, uh, series kind of... They killed it. They killed it. It's made by Rockstar, makes, you know, Grand Theft Auto. Rockstar. Um, Rock, everyone should know, Rock, you know, like, Red Dead Redemption, if folks don't know, Red Dead Redemption. Yeah. All the GTA. All the GTA. Yeah, it's like, funny, because, like, Grand Theft Auto right now, if you still play it, like, online, they're actually, like, stepping up their... The cars, like, they're getting really close to, like, real models, which they technically can't use because mm-hmm. they'd have to get licensing. But, yep. like, they're actually like, pushing the envelope and actually putting, like, real cars in, so. That's awesome. I remember, like, I think it was, like, Vice City when I first, like, looked at that. Um, I forget what it was called, but I was, like, I don't care what you call this. It's a fucking Mustang. And then, like, the Ferrari was obviously a Ferrari. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> They'll mix and match yeah. stuff a lot of times. Yeah. And then... I was super stoked when uh, San Andreas came out and you could ride bikes. Mm. Oh yeah, like bicycles. That was that. See, that was like the original GTA Grand Theft Auto game that I was like introduced to. That that, that was the the first one that I had. And I know it's a little off topic, but like, does anybody remember the first GTA? It was. No, uh, I ain't gonna. Oh, I'm way too young for that. It was a top <laughs> down view. It, like, wait, it was like a Pokemon view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was garbage. <laughs> But, like, you could still do, like, some, like, I guess, like, hoodlum-ass shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some GTA-ass shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but they, they came so far. They did so yeah. much with it. Uh, I really can't wait to see what happens next with that. But let's keep going down this tuner yeah. trail. Let's see Absolutely. where this goes. Okay. Yeah, tuners. Um, so it also helps with my dad. At the time, I didn't, I wasn't, like, well-versed on cars. Mm. But, like, my dad had an Acura Integra. Oh yeah. Um, for those that don't know, as far as like Honda goes, which Acura is like the luxury brand of Honda, um, at least here in the states. Mm. Um, same like Nissan is with Infiniti, Toyota is with Lexus. Um, so my dad had a manual Acura Integra. Um, it wasn't like a top trim car. Like it was, it was what he could afford. But like. Mm. Uh, I remember as a kid, he would, like, take me out and, like, get on it a little bit. And I thought it was fast, so it was fun. Yeah. Um, so that probably had, like, a small influence on me as well growing up with Just that. Just that, like, nostalgic kind of... Yeah. Having my, you know, having a good time with Dad. And yeah, him. and, like, cars now, as far as, like, affordable sports cars for, like, young people, uh, it's just not what it should be or, mm. like, where it was. Well, what do you mean by that? Um, like what it should be the options like like Honda in the 90s and early 2000s was like pumping out all sorts of different cars Like you get an Integra they still have Civics of course um, but they had Preludes they had something called S2000 uh, even an NSX I remember the S2000 because it was kind of like a, a mimic of the Mercedes that I had the SLK 230 mm-hmm. Like they were basically the same car, like the convertible coupes. Oh, yeah, just yeah. really the small, small ones. With, with yeah. your with your like small block with the turbo, and like yeah, you get those like a six speed, and that's a hell of a roadster right there. Yeah. And then like obviously you can be like worked up to like a drift car or what have you, what, what you need for yeah. Kind of thing. So like Honda was a powerhouse, um, and along with other Japanese cars at the time, they were just really killing it. Um, what do you what do you think what do you think changed that what do you think slowed down that market or maybe okay like um basically in the 80s and 90s like japan had like a booming economy so people had tons of money to spend and mm-hmm. like the corporations over there um just dumped as much money as they could into developing sports cars because people would buy them so that's why you had all these crazy things coming out of japan at that time and 
basically now it's like once the recession hit like 07 08 mm. uh you know pretty much all sports cars take a hit from that because people don't have money to spend mm-hmm. um that and just like culturally i think cars are kind of taking a back seat people would rather uber uh play Fortnite, stuff like that <laughs> i don't Same know how it's it's harder for kids now to get into cars i think but then again, I say that, but there's, like, Instagram and YouTube and stuff. So that's something so, I, I've I noticed, know. though, because, like, you know, I'm I'm in school, too, but, like, I'm a non-traditional older adult student, and, like, we kick it with all these, like, younger individuals, and, like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing all my own work on my truck, and, like, I talk to them about it, and, like, how the fuck do you do that? And I'm like, well, you figure it out, kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, a lot of people don't know how to t- change their own tires. Yeah, you know? and so, like, really, like, if you learn the basics and you, like, find yourself in a friend group where, like, everyone has cars and stuff, yeah. you're more or less becoming a superhero to that, that circle. Yeah. And people will help you. Like, there's all types of car people, but, like, generally people are excited to, like, help you and, and like, teach you stuff. So... Yeah, make it work. Make it yeah, cool. like really, honestly, it is still kind of like a like a trade, almost like like a plumber would be yeah. or like a heating and air guy would be, and so like it's it's good to see that to some degree that's still being passed down. You're like, talking about mechanics, yeah, yeah, in general, like automotive, yeah, mechanics. Um, because as long as we do have cars, it is necessary to have. Yeah, and even like, yeah, I think we're at a really like critical turning point. As far as, like, electric technology. Mm. So, like, what Elon Musk is doing. I mean, we got to save the world <laughs> somehow. And uh, things will get phased out and the electric stuff will be the norm eventually. Mm. But it's it's interesting to see, like, how that's going to have an effect on, like, mechanics. Like, how is that going to change? Well, I have a question for you about that. But I kind of I want to go into, like, your background, okay. where you come from, yeah. what you're about. Um and keep that question in the back of my mind until we hit it again. Yeah, we can continue my, my little my little story. <laughs> um, so my question for you, and I'm sure you know our, our, our listeners and our viewership want to kind of pick your brain through us. You know, hopefully we're doing them justice. Um, so where do you, like, originally come from? Like, what kind of, ha- you know, not necessarily what kind of household, but, like, just your background. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm from Concord, North Carolina. Um, it's not too far from Charlotte, North Carolina. It's basically the suburbs at this point. Um, lived there my whole life. Originally, my parents moved there in like 95. So the whole area has grown a lot, which is convenient because like, we'll tie this back in the cars. Like when I was a kid, there weren't really that many car shows to go to, or if there were, I just didn't know about them. Mm. But like at this point, uh, we have shows that travel up and down the East Coast, and some of them make stops in Charlotte. Mm. So it's, very it's like convenient. one of the hubs. Yeah, it's it's become convenient for me uh, to be able to go out and like be in that environment, you know. Because if I lived in I don't know, I don't like Idaho or something, you're you're kind of screwed. <laughs> <laughs> you're just there. Yeah, it's yeah. it's harder to get into stuff like that. So I guess with growth, it's become a little bit easier. Um, it's cool to not have to rely on YouTube <laughs> to be able to like find exposure to things like that. So yeah, yeah, you're definitely in a convenient location for that. Yeah, I would say like the next closest hub for you would probably be like Myrtle Beach, probably maybe. or Atlanta. Atlanta's got some cool stuff yeah. going down there. Atlanta would seem like it has. Yeah, it, cool. it does have some cool car stuff going down. But like as far as like the environment, uh, just grew up in a regular, regular neighborhood. I'm too crazy. Concord. North yeah, Atlanta. not rich, not poor. Just basic. Yeah. And how do you how do you think um that environment shaped your uh understanding of things now? Hmm. I know it's like a super deep question. I mean <laughs> I may have to like narrow it down a little bit, but I would say how did that like develop your outlook in and how you like work with cars. Yeah. And what so, because I don't think we've mentioned this. Yeah, what, all. what do you do? What with cars? do you do with cars? Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, right now, um, I, I have a car. It's not worth modifying. It's just a 2007 Honda Civic. It's just a basic, basic point A to point B car. Um, 
I, you know, I've been itching to get my hands on a sports car forever. Mm. Um, but it's just, you know, I got to wait until I can finally pull the trigger and actually get something. Uh, so, like, once I graduate, I'll probably try to get something for myself. And this, I know Connor, um, me and Connor are, are pretty good friends um, because through the the art department at the university that we go to. Yep. And Connor, something that he still hasn't mentioned because he's super modest, is a kick-ass <laughs> fucking car photographer. And he's, like, amazing, <laughs> amazing at it. And uh, I'm sure you've built your own kind of, or starting to at least, uh, like, from what I see, build your own connections within that industry. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we can kind of dive into that a little bit. Um, Crazy two years has been... Not crazy, but it's been cool to like yeah. see how things have turned out. Develop. Uh, Development. Yeah, I guess I can speak on that. Yeah. So me and you, we took that film photography class yep. back in like 2017. I remember that. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we took a class. We learned how to shoot film. We even learned how to like develop it in yep. the darkroom, which was difficult. But it, it really hooked me. Like Photography was always cool to me, but it wasn't very accessible because mm-hmm. like, if you don't you know, if you have your phone camera, you can only do so much. It's not the same. Yeah. Yeah. So after I took this film class, I actually used my dad's old film camera that he had laying around, so that was convenient. Um, I knew I wanted to get, like, a digital camera for myself, so that's exactly what I did. Mm. And, like, that was back in 2018. Yeah. I think Christmas is when I got it. And then I, I spent, like, the last two years uh, going to as many car meets, as many car shows as I possibly can. Um, and I just shot a bunch of stuff. I'm still growing. Like, <laughs> don't give me too much credit. Like, I, I'm i getting there, but it, it is a, a journey. You got to really figure things out. Well, explain a little bit about navigating within that industry and what you've learned. Yeah, and is it really competitive? Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, as far as, like, when I started, even before I picked up that digital camera, I had been going to, like, just little meets in like late high school, early college, going to you know local stuff, um, and I would always see these other people with like these high end cameras, and mm. I was like, I was like, I wonder what's that, what's that like, you know? So, but yeah, it's it's competitive. Like, was it a little? Was it a little at first? Whenever you were going there and you were seeing this crazy equipment, was it a little? Did it turn you off, or did it, or or did it kind of like make? What's the word I'm looking for? Did it? I don't know. Did, did it, did it uh, shoe him like a raccoon on the like back porch <laughs> with a broom? Like, get out of here, kid? Yeah, I mean, it was... I don't know, man. I, it, I know what you're trying to say. I think, like, until I got my own camera, I thought it was a little bit, like, out of reach. Yeah. Seeing Daunting. other people at shows shooting right. stuff, I was thinking, like, I wonder how hard that is. Yeah. Like, I want to do it, but is it that difficult? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's very competitive. There are people out there who are killing it. Um, every show I go to now, it's like... There's like 500 high schooler kids who all have their own like either cameras or people that you always got the people walking around with their phones getting in your shot. Yeah, and you're like, ah, oh, come on, man. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's fine. It is highly competitive, but I think it doesn't really matter. Um, you just got to really focus on your craft. I would be shooting even if like I didn't see like a lane for myself. You know, I would just do it because I enjoy it. So that's like super huge to even like say because like people don't really i mean for me you know if i don't if i don't i don't know that's a pure thing to say for me i don't know (laughs) like the fact that you would still do and continue doing something even without like even with knowing that hey maybe i maybe i can't really make a living out of this or can't benefit myself we're talking about like barriers to the market right effectively like how hard is it to like get a gig that eventually might be like a, a paying situation right. or something like that yeah and like i mean the, the, those do exist though right like there are commissions oh yeah i mean you can you can get a job doing that or you can i mean even just reach out to someone well it, there's like a little thing where like you probably shouldn't reach out to someone and ask them like i wouldn't reach out and ask to shoot their car and then also be like i'm gonna charge you 
It is better to set up your rate. It's like some or weird self-promotion, like, hey, I really want to take photos of your car, and you can pay me for it. Yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the wrong way to do it. You should let people come to you or just put up your rates and then see what happens. Mm-hmm. So, Is there, like, places where you – where, like, on the Internet where you do that? Are there, like, specific forums or, like, how um, do you – how how do you take care of that? Like how do you Instagram is Instagram? where I live. That's where my social media presence is. Mm. Um, I'm sure you know you can reach out through Facebook or whatever else, or like Reddit or something. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. All right. So I I have some like fun questions I'd like to ask. Okay. Um, and so let's do this all within like the world you know of tuners. Like I come more from like a muscle background mm. and like, oh, yeah. you know, V8s all day or like if you can yeah. pull a diesel somewhere, let's get it. <laughs> but all right. So I'm going to throw out like a, a style of like racing or driving and I want you to give me a tuner and a setup. Oh, OK. Uh, so the first one I want to play with and Dima, if you have one you want to ask, go for it. Uh, but the first one, drag racing. Oh, drag racing. Uh, it's gonna sound kind of cliche, but like a Supra, maybe. Okay. Um, you know. I remember in Gran Turismo, that was like my favorite car. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like. It was affordable, and fuck all could you do with it. Yeah, like, it was awesome. I mean, if you really want to make a like a thousand horsepower drag car, a Supra is a solid choice. Um, there there is like front wheel drive stuff. People trying to modify the crap out of Civics. <laughs> I bet that that's is, a little harder. Though. I see those around the city. Oh man, the way they the transmissions work in those, being like the front end. Oh man, what the? Oh, that's that's scary. Yeah, because yeah, you get like torque steer. Which yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It's like oversteers and it's like yeah, yeah. yeah the car's yeah. taking you around because it's front wheel drive. <laughs> oh my god. Well, yeah, we had that scary. problem with uh my fr- uh my good friend uh his his Ford uh it's not an Escort. What are the new ones? The f- a little uh, hatchback thing. Focus? Yeah. He's got the... It's not the RS, but it's the one no, right under the it. the RS is nice. He's got the one right under it. Okay. And uh, put in all kinds of sway bars and shit, trying mm. to, like, overcome the... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the RS is gnarly. That's a really cool car. Like, I like all cars, by the way. Like, I know I said that. Yeah, yeah. My heart is where Jap- Japanese stuff is, but, like, I can appreciate old muscle cars. Those are really cool. Um, I got a soft spot for like old Camaro, some like you know old Dodges. That's me right there, man. You're starting to get into my lane. Old like, Mustangs as well, love. anything, and then like European stuff as well. You know, I can appreciate yeah. a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, even though I know I'll never own one. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> let's let's keep a, let's keep a good positive. Uh, outside, it's you know? likely I won't. <laughs> like for me, muscle cars were never stated better than like the old big block Chevelles. Like that's a sexy yeah. whip. That and like the uh, the old Plymouths, like the uh, Barracuda and stuff. Oh yes! Yeah. Mm. Oh my god! I miss. Yeah. Mm. Ah, damn. Wow, that was like back in the day. Dude. Mm. Well, you know, I think that my it's like f- mid to late sixties and like very early seventies. Yeah, that's like back in the Peter, day, dude. Peter, Peter, you're you're singing my song. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So speaking of that, speaking on that, my thing with I love. Especially, like, I think my love for, for, for car culture comes from people taking older cars um, and restoring them and, and, and kind of bringing them back to life. I could see Dima trying to get down one of those, like, the old Cadillacs with the hydraulics. <laughs> Riding around with that one left wheel up in the air. <laughs> You're talking about some West Coast shit, man. With like oh, the those are cool too. Low with like 13 cool. inch steering wheel, just like oh my god, dude. Yeah, I would totally do it, man. I know you would. That would be sick, dude. Um, All not right. only that, but like you know, like I have a huge fascination with like motorcycles and stuff like that. You know, I've always wanted a bike. You know, like a Harley or maybe a, a Suzuki or something oh, like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, just cold, that kind of culture in general fascinates me. Just taking like older, older models, older things and and kind of bringing them back to life and making them relevant still. Yeah. You know? All right. So I've got some more race questions. Okay. (laughs) All right. Uh, so if you were going to design a tuner for rally, what what would you do? Um, I feel like I'm forced to go with one of two things. It's either a Mitsubishi, 
uh, an Evo. Um, and I know exactly what the next one's gonna be. Please say it. Definitely a Subaru. I mean, those those two cars are those two manufacturers really made their names in, in rally racing. They yeah, so. they one hundred percent did. Yeah. I, and then what would your setup be for that? Oh, my setup? like would you do any like any like big major engine mods or anything with like the suspension? Hmm, I've never really thought about like. If I were to own a car, like obviously people own Subarus, but a lot of them don't rally. So they just was, they sit there in traffic and think about if it. If I was actually gonna like, <laughs> go out and, and go out, like oh man, I'd probably try to keep it simple. Probably wouldn't do too much to it, honestly. As long as it was fast enough to like get through corners but not kill me. <laughs> yeah, so like I think uh with rally if I if I'm if I'm correct here, like their big thing isn't racing each other, it's more about times. Uh yeah, rally racing is like if you just I watched YouTube videos of like people actually like, doing it competitively. It's scary as shit. It's probably one of the scariest things you can do because like one wrong turn and you're into a tree. You're in the air, you're upside down. <laughs> oh my god. You're, like, they're in snow, they're in rain. Like that takes a, another level of like skill if you're a rally racer. Like, Concentration is uh, okay. yeah. Next one. <laughs> street racing. This one is gonna be right up your alley, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Street racing street. and like the most illegitimate, illegal stance as possible. Like what you got, hit the streets, make it happen. We're going for pink slips, dog. <laughs> my, I mean, I would probably... This is my grandma's car. I can't lose it. <laughs> I would have to choose probably, like, uh, a Nissan Skyline. Oh. We're talking, like, GTR kind yes, of thing? Yes, GTRs. Um, even though... Are those still illegal in the States? Yeah, we can totally, like, open that can of worms as far as, like, what's legal and isn't. Right now... The R32 Skyline, which is from like the late 80s, those are legal, so you can import them. Uh, Japan has this, well, we have this stupid law where if a car isn't sold originally here, um, you have to wait 25 years to import them. Whoa. Yeah. So it's a grandfather clause kind of thing. It's, Holy crap, and 25 for, years. For people who like Japanese stuff, and Japan didn't sell like everything over here in this market there's so many things over there that we didn't get so we're all just sitting here waiting waiting <laughs> and uh if you want like a nissan skyline like right now if you get a gtr it's going to cost you fifty thousand and above <laughs> and that's, i mean if we want to talk about the r34 skyline which and what's the difference here uh they're all very similar they're all all-wheel drive um, they all have an inline six twin turbo making about like 320 ish horsepower. They, Japan kind of lied about their numbers. They had this weird agreement between the manufacturers. That they, they pulled a Volvo. They wouldn't go over <laughs> 300. Volkswagen. Yeah. They wouldn't go over 300 for some reason. I think it was like safety or they didn't want to like compete that much, but they lied. Um, <laughs> so they're all similar in that aspect. All wheel drive inline six twin turbo. Um, but there's just three generations of them. Kicking ass. Kicking ass, basically. Kicking ass and making everybody's pocket sweat in the fucking Yeah, the R34s, which Paul Walker drove in Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, R.I.P. Those are still Didn't he fuck that car up, too? Yeah, they shot it with, like, a... uh, like a sawed an EMP off? or something like uh, that. Some, I don't wait, know. Paul Walker is the dude that passed away, right? Yeah. 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 He, was, he was, like, the, the main star in those movies. And then, all right. So you're going to go with the... With the skyline, and you're not gonna fuck with it too much. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely gonna mess with it. Are you now? I'm just basically, uh, best way to make power out of those cars, or like any Japanese cars, turbo. It's like basically you just take off the stock ones, you put on like a big single turbo, the biggest one you can find. Yeah, and then I mean, those cars are pretty durable, honestly. Like the Toyota Supra is known for like being very reliable if you turn up the power. So. You could squeeze like 600 horsepower, even more, Damn. without doing that much. So, like, when you're when you're pushing that kind of power, are you gonna try to do anything with like the uh, the the engine components, like uh, like like oil pump and stuff like that? Things that yeah. are like compensational, that are gonna like try to like <laughs> increase the longevity of this, yeah. make it more reliable. If you if you want to go with more power, like you would have to. Make sure you get better fuel injectors because you can't just like put on a big turbo, have more air coming in. 
Um, then you're running lean. Yeah, so yeah, you'd have to do that. You'd have to reinforce some stuff probably, but for the most part, you'd be okay. And this is gearhead talk. Yeah. So essentially, <laughs> essentially, what, like, what, what we're talking, talking about is like... <laughs> So engines run on a fuel, right? Uh, uh, air mixture, sure. air. Yep. and if you have too much of one or too much of the other, it's a bad thing. Yeah, you want a peaceful mixture and a healthy burn. Just compensation, like yeah, yeah. balance. They're called combustion engines yeah. because you have literally an explosion in the in the yep. cylinder chamber. Right. And yeah, if you're too much fuel or too much air, it's not a healthy burn. Mm-hmm. You got to get it uh, tuned. You start getting as well. weird funky backfires, pissing start fucking up, like Yeah. Bad you're day. not you're not you're not doing too good. But you're if you you know, good. if you know what you're doing and you don't push it beyond what you should, you can you can squeeze power out of stuff like that. Alright, I'm I'm home. I finished. <laughs> Shoo. That's number one. On to the next bout, my boys. <laughs> <A-kya! laughs> Alright. This one right here is coming from uh, Triple C Brewing Company. They're a uh, Charlotte brand. Okay. So uh, they're your neighbor's dog. Okay, man. Uh, this one is their bourbon barrel aged up all night breakfast porter. Porter brew with honey and coffee. Okay. And uh, let's see how this one goes. Oh. Is it gross? Definitely should be colder. <laughs> it's like, you know, we had to like drive to the studio and stuff and. We don't have a refrigerator or a cooler because which we're we should poor in the freaking in in the truck. Actually, you can get one for the truck. I found that out the other day. Oh my god! Dude. Yeah, my cousin told me about it. We sleeping. You taste that? Yeah, I'll give you a little sip. You can definitely taste the honey. The demon mm. get a little little bing on it. Little... Actually, that's not bad. It's not bad, but if it were colder, I'd really be into it. Kind of buy me a coffee for a second. Didn't it have coffee? It does. It? Yeah, that's why. Oh. Not wow. That's Sorry. Like a, I forgot a to let you guys coffee licorice kind I of. I forgot to let you guys taste the home sweet home, but uh yeah, you're obviously, really, you're really... obviously <laughs> I'm the only Motley Crue fan in the room, so shit, my bad. <laughs> Usually I'm a little more cons- uh considerate. Well, alright, alright. I've got one more race style. Go ahead. Uh, so we just we've covered drag, we've covered rally, we've covered street. I, I feel like I know what you're about to say. Well, what's next? Drift. Drift, my Drifting. man. Drifting. See how I kind of worked a little more. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let me just like preface this by saying like drift cars are like something that I have like a, an even further interest into. Um, you know, there's a place like. I don't know. It's like 15 minutes from here. Mm-hmm. You, you've probably Piedmont. seen Piedmont. Yeah. You're familiar with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's where I go to actually watch drifting. So it's like local and it's fun. It's like grassroots. Next time you go out there, hit me up. Yeah. I usually go as much as I can. They hold events like once a month. So, but yeah, it's like fun local stuff. People just bring out what they can. They slide. Just throwing it out there. If you wanted to do a collab with us, we'll go out there. We'll, we'll podcast the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we, cool. can, we can set that up. I think there's, the one that happened this month already happened, but they're going to be doing something in March, so I just don't know when yet. You heard here her first, folks. I like March. Yeah. It's a really laid-back environment. Like, I like it. And I met lots of people through it, so it's cool. I'm a, I'm a fat kid. I like laid-back. <laughs> but yeah, as far as like a, a drift build, uh, hmm, I, I would have to go with like a Nissan Silvia, like an S15. Okay, that's not what I expected, but all right. What were you expecting? <laughs> oh, so I was I honestly expected to hear Mazda. Oh. Ma- th- that's, now that you oh, mention like it. an RX-7. Mazda yeah, like, is my kind of A lot of, of people throw that rotary engine out there. Yeah. and Those things are so cool. They're interesting. They're so cool. And I think it is a shame that they don't really like come out anymore. It is a shame. <laughs> but uh, it's a big shame because like they're they're super. Uh, what's the word I'm looking they're for? Not efficient. They're they're, they're a little unreliable, but e- they make the coolest sound. <laughs> well, they just sound like an angry ass hornet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's have you ever like seen one of those motors like taken apart? Yeah, I and mean, it's I'm like not, this like triangle. They're little Doritos. Fucking weird, like the three D Doritos almost. <laughs> Dude, you gotta. I gotta like tell you to look someone up on Instagram. He has what's called a four rotor, which is the fuck. 
So like the, the little fuck? the little triangle thing is in the housing, right? Yeah, and you're running on the three cylinders basically. Yeah, basically sorta. Mazda had uh they had two rotors, which is what you would find in like an RX seven. Um they had I think a three rotor and a four rotor is like what they used in like race cars. Yeah. So the thing sounds insane. It's crazy. I'll have to definitely tell you to like look that up. Yeah, he Nick is into it, huh? What were the, the leaderages on those? They're they're really small engines. They're like one point three liters. <laughs> the combustion, just is tiny, insane. and they rev. To like that, that's the, what it all comes down to. Like, yeah, you work on like the motor size, like the liters, or like in some cases CCs, but it all comes down to what's that combustion ratio? Yeah, yeah. or not the combustion ratio, the um, displacement ratio. Yeah, so like one point three. I know on the the FD RX seven, which is like mid nineties. Um, they were twin turbos as well. Um, they had like sequential turbos, so like there was a smaller one that would spool up quicker, and then uh, like a larger one that hit higher in the RPMs. So, but yeah, D- Mazda. I think it's rumored they're actually trying to make a rotary. They're trying to make it work. Um, they might pair it with like some sort of electric stuff, which is mm. again like that's right up their feature. alley. And yeah, I could see that being a thing. I wouldn't be mad at it honestly if that's what it took to make it work, but we'll see. Let me throw one more at you. One more, just for fun. Okay. Um, are you familiar with it's um it's an off road race and it's called King of Hammers. I don't think so. Uh, so. Basically, it's an off-road kind of like um, it's a time trial thing where you're like, some of it's rock crawling, some of it's desert racing. What would you do with a tuner for that? And like, oh, this is this is going to imply that you need to go ahead and make some serious alterations. You need oh, to boy. try to make it fit with like a long travel suspension, yeah. larger tires, and, and you need to talk about it like I don't understand because sometimes I don't understand. All right, so you're you're going as well as for the folks that are listening. Uh, you you know all the off road shit you see Jeeps do. Yeah, you need to be able to do that. It's not super yeah. fast per se. Like, you're not necessarily trying to get up this mountain in record time. You're trying to get there without killing yourself. Right. Yeah. So, Zigzagging through shit. To think of. So, if you're going to take a tuner and make a, a Jeep out of it, if Yeah, I'm Jeep, trying to think of what Jeep would actually slash work. Jeep doom buggy. <laughs> what would work for that? I mean, honestly, <laughs> what time. I would do is I would try to defi- pick something with the, the shortest wheelbase. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm thinking maybe like a Honda, like CRX I or something. I was thinking like a Honda Civic, like an EG. I was hatchback. thinking like a tank. <laughs> I would, I would like. I was thinking CRX just because yeah. they were like tiny. Yeah, but, like, are small. So Those things are but I would even go with like a Suzuki. Ooh, like something old school box yeah. body that like cutting it up. You're not gonna hurt your feelings. Yeah, mm. maybe like an old like like an old Datsun. Maybe? Ooh. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to think of a car that I could use as like a shell and put it on like huge wheels and Yeah, and suspension. like maybe something with like a mid mount motor. Oh man. Yeah. Because you're gonna try to find that balance. Yeah. Dude, so many ideas swirling. Yeah. So many things. Alright. I don't know, I feel like a Honda, yeah. Alright, so we're going with a Honda hatchback body. Yep. Uh we're looking at what kind of model? Uh Early 90s Civic. So, right. little hatchback. Are you going to use the same motor? Oh. You definitely See, could. Some, you mm, definitely could. Nah, you'd have I to wouldn't. beef it up, though. I wouldn't. It, I'd probably, if we're going to be, like, climbing over rocks and stuff, I don't you, think the little... You dropping that there. LS in there? Is that yeah, I think I probably... Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> make something gnarly. <laughs> <laughs> dropping that oh, LS, uh, maybe put, like, a monster-built, like, tranny in there. Oh, my sick. God, dude. Like swap on it. Oh Jesus! <laughs> what size wheels would you play with? Uh, probably something small so I could fit like really big tires. It's like maybe like like an eighteen to a twenty somewhere in there. Maybe even smaller than that. Really? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking like maybe like sixteens. Whew. Around there. You gonna use that maybe. for the desert track too? Because like mm. some of it is like sand racing. Yeah. And you want bigger, wider for that. Maybe seventeens would be good. You get some of those like. Swamp vamps that yeah. look like fucking like paddles <laughs> going through the sand. You get that fucking stream of the sand in the air. As you're like romping through like seventh <laughs> gear. You're like, 
Jordan is just like a like you know like how jet skis have that like water that shoots out of the ass. Yeah, them. yeah, but it's just sand. But it's <laughs> <laughs> a rainbow of sand. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. That sounds like a fucking in the midnight moon, like the Fast and Furious scene right there. Dude. Yeah, um, that might be like Fast and Furious, like seventeen. They need to stop making those. <laughs> <laughs> They're never gonna stop, man. I feel like they should have just stopped. They're gonna uh, keep on. They still got it. Diesel. They still got The Rock in it. Family. Wait. I don't even know if we can <laughs> say The Rock. Dog. I think we had to say Dwayne Johnson. Yeah. yeah, Dwayne. Yeah. Which big fan? Big fan. I wanna. I wanna redirect the conversation to photography. Okay. Um, reel it in for us. I, yeah, yeah, I wanna reel it in. And, uh, redirect it to photography. I want to kind of pick your brain about um, transitioning from high school to college. Okay. And did you have did you have that same interest in cars in high school that you did in college? And segueing off of that and kind of piggybacking off of okay. that. If so, how did being in a college environment allow you to kind of explore that more? That's a perfect, perfect question. Yeah. That's somewhat where I'm at now. So, like I said before, when I was a kid, we already established Need for Speed. As a kid, you can't really be going, like, out at night right. to car meets, really. Um, that Unless was, your dad is, like, a... <laughs> <laughs> Unless your parents don't care about it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, like... So for a while, that was pretty much it. That was the extent of like what I could do in real life. Um, but like once I got into high school, me and some buddies uh, would go to UNC Charlotte uh, because I live like 15 minutes from that. Um, mm-hmm. And they had a little a little meet that they would do every Sunday night, or not every Sunday night, but like once a month I think. Mm-hmm. And we would go and just absolutely mob an entire parking deck. Um, and so that was, that was like really my first initiation into like actually going out yeah. and seeing stuff like firsthand. And um, were you like, were you like, was, was the, was photography any, anywhere near that picture or were you just like so fascinated by just the fact that they were taking pictures from my phone? Okay. Really garbage. So there's pictures. something there. Yeah. There's something there. More so. I wasn't good at all at photography. I'd still learn, so at that point you're yeah. basically documenting. Yeah, basically for, like your own personal like interest. Yeah, it was a good time, and mm-hmm. like you know, like I said, I noticed other people with cameras, and I was just kind of like, oh. Did you take pictures of their cameras? No, <laughs> <laughs> I would have. I'd have been like, what the fuck they got. <laughs> yeah. So like that was fun for a while. Yeah, and then it came to like this was my senior year of high school. Uh, Thinking about like where am I gonna go to college, and I already I picked the best choice, one of the two best choices. But Greensboro actually worked out better than UNCC would have ever mm. worked out because the meet there got shut down. Mm. So if I was just gonna go there and have that be to like, UNCC, yeah, to yeah. UNCC. If I was gonna go there and like bank on the fact that that meet would be there, you'd have been out of luck. Yeah. yeah. Whereas here, like I couldn't have gone to college out of state or on the coast or in the mountains because that's like away from where I need to be. Right. I need to be in this environment if mm-hmm. I'm gonna like actually work my way up through it. So and when you and say it, environment you mean just like that. around car stuff. Yeah and having Piedmont right there. Yeah. Like I found out what Piedmont was. Uh there was cars and coffee, which most cities have cars and coffee. Yeah. It was literally in the art building parking lot yep. on UNCG's campus. Which is where we pretty much live. Yeah. So I would get up on a Saturday morning, granted it was a little early, so but if I'm gonna go and shoot stuff and have fun, then like it was totally worth it. Mm-hmm. Convenient. So I really I picked a, a good place to go to school, for sure. <laughs> and you feel like being in school could you have I guess what I'm trying to ask is was school necessary for you to get to this point do you think or mm. could you have gotten to this point um, <laughs> making the same friends that you made and making the same connections um yes and no because mm. there are people that I've met locally here that I wouldn't have met um Based if on- I hadn't gone to school I had someone yeah. when I was in Charlotte at a show someone who goes here um he actually like films events and like makes youtube videos he saw i was wearing my uncg hat 
And he was like, hey, you go to that school? I was like, yeah, man. He was like, Show that to the camera. Yeah, this anytime my, anytime I ever see Connor. There's a reason for that. He's wearing this, this hat. dirty ass four year old. <laughs> I'm burning this when I graduate. It's probably going to like spread the coronavirus. <laughs> but like, uh, it's windy here. That's yeah. one thing I've noticed. It's always windy here. And like, my hair, it gets long. Yeah. It would be destroyed the second I walk outside. So I just slap a cap on everywhere. Yeah. So. I thought originally when when I first met you, I was like, "Is this guy like a baseball player is he or something?" Bald? Like, <laughs> <laughs> he's got the skull. <laughs> no, nothing on the on the top, yeah. just the wild yeah. side. Yeah, yeah, my hair would be done, looking like Doc from Back to the Future. <laughs> Marty, <laughs> Great Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be done. Yeah, I know my classmates are like, this kid always wears the same hat. I'm just too, like, lazy, and, like, I just don't want to spend money on a new hat, so yeah. I'll just ride this one. I dig that, dude. I, I actually <laughs> respect that, man. I respect people that kind of re-wear the same shit, you know? I mean, like, I re-bought the same. I had, like, an, another pair of bands like this, and I, I liked them so much I bought them again. So people are probably like, he's been wearing the same shoes for, like, four years. <laughs> nope, same pair, I same color. Don't, I don't yeah. give a shit. It's whatever. Dude, you know, and I don't, I don't <laughs> think they... You should, man. I think that um, it's all about preference. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'll worry about like, looking nice after I graduate. Yeah. <laughs> On that note, uh, so what have you got, like, bagged for the future? What are you, what are you looking at doing? Ah, uh, okay. Actually, I don't think I answered... Did I answer your question about, like, um, what I... Could I have gotten to where I am without school? Yeah, yeah. Part of me thinks maybe, because, like, there's nothing stopping me going out and shooting stuff mm -hmm. but at, i guess i already answered this but like yeah at the same time being on campus in this kind of environment uh really helped me so kind of got your creative juices flowing. yeah it it, it was convenient because back in concord we don't have like a drift event 15 minutes away so it's convenient and photography wouldn't necessarily be as prevalent as it is without i feel like maybe the art school Thing, yeah, right? I, I'm like picking up a camera is probably one of the best things that ever happened to me. Mm. Like, and I wouldn't have gotten that had I not gone to school. So, there's there's something. Yeah, yeah. And Nick, what were you gonna ask? I'm just seeing like, um, you know, what have you got cooking right now? And then what are you trying to, you know, yeah. ascertain in the future? What yeah, are, what are the plans? What are you cooking? What's for dinner? <sighs> All right. Uh, let's let's say college is lunch. What's for dinner? So I guess right now I'm really, I'm trying to balance graphic design because that's what technically uh, our program is like. It's kind of, it's called new media and design. It's yeah. not called graphic design, but like, that's what I want to do. But also I have this passion for photography. Um, ideally I'd like to be able to combine both or be able to, to handle both for a job. Um, I just want to have my options open, like be flexible a little mm. bit. So, uh, as far as the future, I mean, I think it's important that I have like a niche. So, like, I'm I'm going towards spoken like a true businessman. I, I'm going towards the automotive industry. If I can combine creativity with like the environment of cars, then like I'll just I know I'll be happy. Mm. There's there's no mm. wrong. Um, maybe I'm a little naive for saying that, <laughs> but um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I think you're really talented. I think speaking for me, a person that we've known each other for for quite some time, like that we went. I dude, I was at your first photo, photo class. You yeah. know what I mean? So it was like coming from a person that's been looking at you, and we follow each other on Instagram. Um, we also had that um, letter signs and symbols yep. class with Matt. Letter signs and symbols. Yeah, so another person I met through that, Matt. So he's yeah. a car guy too. Yep. And uh, like just being around you and looking at your development and your transition from where you started to where you are now is like freaking insane. Yeah. <laughs> like I've, I like trust me when I say this. Like I have not seen like any of our peers make as big of a leap in our school as you have uh, <laughs> which is like for to me yeah okay know? yeah you can say that i mean i do i do work hard like uh i'm, I'm getting a little burnt out not mm. gonna lie um a little bit tired yeah uh there have been times where like i've had to go to a show and then 
drive back up here and then like finish a project mm. all in one day. Uh, and like, you know, it's just a little bit tiring sometimes, but I think it's important that I really push myself though. It's definitely important. And this is what's like now is like what's shaping you to, to where you're going to be yeah. once you get out of college, you know? Yep. Um, that's yeah. I'm, I'm trying to think like there is a, a design agency in Charlotte so that's good. It's close. Um, and it deals with automotive stuff. I think they do work with Chevy mostly. Mm. Uh, I have to look at their website again. I think they might do some stuff for Coca-Cola, uh, BMW. So if I can get a job there, that would be pretty cool. Would you be willing to do um, freelance and like maybe or maybe work with more of like an an underground kind of uh, event based kind of job where they do tours around the east coast or something like that or? yeah there's there's a traveling car show and I, I know they have graphic designers they have a team i've actually seen them post up on their instagram job offerings mm. obviously i'm in school so i can't really go for it yeah. but just knowing that that opportunity is out there that would be a good fit um yeah but like at the same time i don't feel like i'm ready yet mm -hmm. once i graduate i'm probably I'm probably just going to pursue some of my own personal projects, try to build up my portfolio a little mm -hmm. bit more, um, and see what happens from there. Travel a little bit. Yeah. Get I, out of the box. Dude, traveling, like... I highly recommend it. I, yeah, I really want to travel, even just for car stuff, like yeah. seeing other shows in different states, because there's definitely like different vibes depending on where you go. Yeah. No, definitely. Big time. Hmm. Especially if you get up, like, start doing stuff like New England, you start seeing a lot of, like, um, stuff from the 50s and 40s, like, a lot of, like, what would, I don't know, I associate with, like, World War II era, like, funny cars, yeah. you know, European funny cars. <laughs> yeah. Funny. And, then, like, you got, like, the Midwest, you start seeing a lot of muscle stuff. Yeah, California get out, is just, like, a melting pot. You get to, like, the West Coast, everything. you start seeing all the chop shop beauty art. I mean, the um, West Coast is like low riders, muscle yeah. cars, exotics, and tuners. Well, Nick, and Nick vintage lived stuff, like, out there for a while, so he's like, you what some, did you see out there? Just like, all, all kinds of like Connor There's All kinds everything. of wild. Just all like yeah. classic trucks, <laughs> muscle cars, like you're like exotic fucking shit. Like I'm like, what the fuck is that? And actually, that's the first time I ever saw an Earth Roamer. The thing I was showing you earlier, the, yeah. the, the house truck. Yeah, it was the first time I saw an Earth Roamer in person. Like. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, I was going up towards uh, Paradise, and um, I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh my god, it's Eric <laughs> <laughs> Huge. It was taking up the road. I was yeah, like, I love really it. Big. But, uh, yeah, no, uh, I guess we're going to start wrapping this one up. Tell everybody where they can find you at. All right. Uh, Instagram, uh, Connor Espo, C-O-N-N-E-R-E-S-P-O. Um, that's really where I throw out most of my pictures and stuff like that. Do you have a, a website or anywhere that people can like just specifically go to that place yet? Not yet. No, but you're um, working on it or no? Not right now, but okay. I have plans. Obviously, yeah. you know, uh, once, once I graduate, I'll have to put my work somewhere. Um, but mainly visit Instagram. Mainly Instagram. And I'll be sure to drop that in the description yeah. below. Yeah. yeah. We will drop that in the description below so everyone can... If they need to get a hold of you, yeah. All right. Well, shit, Connor. I appreciate you coming out today. Yeah, cool. thank you. Good for, talk. This is for cool. coming out for a rodeo, uh, yeah, man. That's awesome. And then to all the viewers and listeners, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Please, if you like this, like it. If, if you hate it, you hate it. Comment, comment, and let us know why. Drop a at dog least. shit fucking comment <laughs> you know in the I mean? fucking dog pile. Like, at least let us know why. Let us know if you didn't understand any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, thanks so much again, yeah. man, and thank cool. our beautiful viewership and our listeners for coming out, listening up to this point. We are trying to shorten the episodes a little bit, so this is our first attempt at that. <laughs> so let us know what you think about it. Nick's making a weird face. Did you see to my cigarette? <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. That was 54 minutes? Yeah.